character sheets on Roll20 for the Fantasy Flight Games uh, Star Wars game. And the things I want to talk about here are really going to be very basic uh, issues that are that are really mostly going to be for people who haven't ever played the game before at all, at least on Roll20. I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the, the basic mechanics of the Fantasy Flight game itself. So if you're not familiar with those either, let's say you're getting ready to go into a Star Wars game and you're not really familiar with the mechanics or the sheet, uh, you'll learn a little bit about both of those here. However, mostly what I want to do is get you equipped so that you can use, uh, use the sheet effectively in game. So <clears throat> the first thing that you're going to notice when you open up a character sheet is that there are multiple tabs that run across the top of the sheet. Uh, that's because the sheet serves multiple purposes depending on um, what kind of data you're trying to reflect in it. So it, sometimes a character sheet really is a vehicle sheet and it's intended to show up as a Star Wars vehicle. So you use this vehicle tab. Uh, sometimes it's giving information about your particular group of PCs. You use the group sheet tab. Um, the NPC sheet, sheet tab you don't really need to worry about as a player. This is something for the GM to use. Uh, that's kind of an abbreviated character sheet that's a little bit easier to navigate. Uh, so you won't be using that. So, so really when you are playing a character in the Star Wars game, you always just want to leave things set on the character sheet, uh, which is over to the far left here. Now, in Star Wars, the, the basic mechanic is that what you want to do is build a pool of dice and roll those dice and then once you get those dice uh, out of those dice come symbols and those symbols tell you how much how successful or uh, whether you were successful at all uh, you were in the task that you were attempting but then also the dice uh, potentially can grant you additional benefits or, or boons and it can also set you back in some different ways. And, and here we have across the top row of the dice pool, if you want to just build a basic dice pool, um, you can do that on your character sheet just using this top row here at the very top of the character sheet. Um, th these green dice are designed to represent basic abilities. So, and you'll find later on in your, your sheet you'll have different characteristics that um, that your character possesses. We'll talk about those in a minute. But the green dice are generally based on the characteristic that you're trying to roll on any particular roll. The yellow dice are called proficiency dice. These dice are upgrades to green dice and what they do is they give you even more uh, advantages and give you some potential for a really good situation to triumph on your roll. Uh, and so you're going to roll some combination of blue, green, and yellow. Now, the truth is on your character sheet, you're, you're going to usually have your blue, your greens, and your yellows already calculated for you. So very seldom are you really going to use these two, uh, these two uh, particular sections of the dice pool. Um, the blue dice represent various circumstances surrounding your skill roll that increase or decrease your chances. So for example, um, if uh, you've got a vehicle that you're piloting that's particularly easy to handle, you're going to add blue dice into your check. Maybe uh, one of your uh, fellow PCs decided to throw a boost along your way because he had a really good roll before this. That might give you additional boost die. It's always good to add these blue dice into your roll when you can. A lot of times they can make the difference. Even though they don't really look that powerful, they can have a really powerful effect on the game. Um, over on the left side are what some people have kind of called the bad dice. These are the dice that uh, are working against the good dice and are offsetting the symbols on the good dice on the other side. Um, generally, the difficulty is set using purple dice. Um, and you can set in, in it from one on up to five of those. That If you had a really difficult task in front of you, you might have five purple dice that you're rolling. Um, 
one purple die represents a simple task or an easy task. Uh, two purple die represents an average task. Three purple die represents a hard task. That covers most of the rolls that you're going to make. The black die, uh, which are called setback die, do exactly the same thing as the boost die do on the other side. They represent environmental factors such as darkness or cover or uh, armor that make it more difficult to get through and uh, hit a target or achieve your success. Um, in the middle, uh, you'll also see a force die. Uh, that's We're not going to talk about force die and using force powers in this particular tutorial, so you can safely ignore that except for one purpose, which we'll get to in a second. But just to give you an idea about what this looks like, if you had a, let's say we have a characteristic uh, three brawn, and uh, we're going to make a, um, a basic... Uh, melee attack and we have uh, one skill level. We'll have two green, we'll have a total of three good dice and one of those green dice will be updated, upgraded because you have a skill level of one. So we've got two green, one yellow here and then on the other side we'll make it an average attack uh, maybe with a setback die due to maybe some environmental conditions. And then we hit this button right here that rolls the dice and we see down in the chat that we've got one success. This is the success symbol here. We've got one advantage here. And if you notice up here what's happening is we're rolling these, um, these uh, setback dice uh, that are creating what are called threat, but we've got more advantage that is offsetting that. So we end up with an advantage. That means in addition to being successful, which is what uh, this explosion die means, we've got one other kind of nice thing that happens that you can choose as a result of the skill check. Your, your GM will be able to help you to kind of understand how all of this works when you get into a game, but at least that gives you a general feel for what it's going to be like when you get in this situation. Now scrolling down, the next thing we're going to see is the destiny pool. At any given time during the game, the destiny pool is going to have a certain number of dark side points and a certain number of light side points in it. Uh, you can spend the light side points to upgrade your green dice to your yellow dice in your dice pool. Uh, you can also spend light side points with the GM's permission uh, to maybe bring along an item that you uh, thought your character had forgotten or something of that nature. To spend a light side point, uh, you're just going to hit the button right there, and uh, that indicates that uh, you flipped a light side point, except in this case there aren't any to flip, so let me go ahead and fix that so that we actually have some points to flip here. All right, so now we should have two light side points, so now I use the light side point and notice the dark side points increase, the light side point goes down when that happens. Um, at the beginning of the game, uh, the, your GM will ask you to roll Destiny. This is the button that you're going to hit when you roll Destiny. This rolls one of the force die and it adds dice to the Destiny pool based on uh, your results. In this case I rolled two light side points and so we get uh, two light side uh, we get two light side pips added to the light side of the destiny pool. Moving down, uh, the next thing you're going to see on your character sheet are your wounds and your strain. Uh, once you exceed your, and your, your wounds are going to count up from, in this character's instance, from 1 to 14. Once this character exceeds that wound threshold, uh, his he falls down and becomes unconscious. Uh, strain is the same way. Once you exceed a strain threshold, you might not necessarily become unconscious, but you become unable to function uh, at least socially in for the rest of your encounter. You also have here a soak rating that reduces incoming damage. Uh, you may also have some defense ratings, but probably not with a beginning character. Very few beginning characters have any kind of defense ratings like uh, this particular character does here. Uh, so now uh, scrolling down we see your uh, basic characteristics. These build green dice for your skill rolls and then we see skill ranks, skills and skill ranks below this. Uh, these are essentially um, um, 
complete dice pools are complete that they help you to complete your pools for your uh, checks. So let's suppose your GM tells you to have two uh, purple die and one red die in an athletics check. Well, we've got our athletics skill that's right here in our die right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our dice pool, add two purples, add one red. It's going to be a hard check for us here, but we'll go ahead and roll it. And guess what? We had a little bit of threat come out of this, but we were uh, successful on this particular athletics check uh, because we see the one explosion there. Let's go ahead and roll that check a couple more times just so you can see what it looks like when you're not successful. When you're not successful, you're going to see a failure symbol here. And uh, worse yet, you may see a despair symbol, which means the GM can really screw you over with something on this check. So this is really a pretty awful check here. He's not successful, and uh, probably in his effort to jump up and grab the edge of that speeder before he took off, it took off. He actually missed and maybe uh, fell about 10 feet uh, over a ledge or something of that nature. Uh, that's that's what the despair symbol will do to you in these situations. So if your GM, you're, the basic mechanic you're going to follow for most of the game is that your GM is going to tell you to roll a particular skill and you're going to go up here and you're going to set the difficulty of the dice pool based on what the GM tells you, uh, maybe in this case two purple, and then you're going to roll the skill the GM asks you to roll. In this case we'll try the perception skill. You click the button and you get the results uh, displayed in your chat screen. One other thing I want to talk about on your sheet that's going to be important to you and that is the combat tab. You've got uh, three sub tabs here. The character info tab, this has got your name, your career, specialization, some other things. You've got your skills tab where you'll spend most of the game and then you've got your combat tab. Now there's a couple of things when you go into combat that are going to be really useful for you here. The first one is, at the beginning of combat, uh, when we roll for initiative, uh, your GM is going to ask you to roll either cool or vigilance. Uh, cool is generally if you're prepared and ready to go into combat and now it's time to go. Vigilance if you're being caught unaware uh, before you go into combat. And if you roll in this initiative section, cool or vi these are just your skills that you have on your skill sheet. But if you roll in this section, it'll actually kick it right over into the turnover for you, turn order for you. So here, this PC is going to roll vigilance. Uh, I got to clear my dice pool. This is a, and this is an important point. Anytime after you um, finish making a roll, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and click this button right here. It uh, clears out your dice pool so that uh, dice don't sneak into a check. So I'm going to have to delete that and we're going to re-roll Vigilance. And here we've got a 2 and a 1 for a PC slot. Um, the next thing you're going to see are your weapons. In this case, this person has a Huntsman Vibro Spear. Uh, if you roll from the weapon instead, this this will take your skill into account. In this case, it's using the character's melee skill. Um, if you roll from your weapon when you attack, I'll set a couple of purple die on this, you'll get a little bit better card in chat that tells you how much damage you did, your base damage, uh, how many advantage you need to give a critical, and uh, gives you a couple of other some more information about the qualities here. So in this case, this attack, I rolled a damage 7, but I got 3 successes, so that'll increase my damage level to 10. So uh, whoever this character is attacking is going to take 10 points minus the target soak. Uh, you'll also see, if you keep scrolling down in the combat tab, you'll eventually see the talents and special abilities of your character. This is a pretty advanced character here, so he has a lot of talents and abilities. You're probably only going to have one or two in your game if you're just starting out. But be sure and scroll down to those and have a look at those because uh, you'll want to make sure you've got them in the back of your mind for when the moment comes where those uh, need to come into play. Now one last thing uh, has to do with tokens. Um, here is my token for this character. Right here, I'll move this other one out of the way. Here's my token for this character. Generally speaking, the way I do it, I, I go ahead and link up my 
token to the character sheet and I generally use the strain which is kind of the social damage that's not really exactly it but we'll call it that um, it, the more kind of mental and emotional damage and stress um, I use the green for the strain and I use these the uh, red for the wound so if you quickly if you've got your token out there you can quickly change the value of that token if let's say you just took five damage I can quickly add his five damage in there that way uh, I also generally when I'm GMing games use the blue tab to show the soak so I know that if Corvin gets hit in a particular situation he's going to lose five he's going to be able to soak up five points of damage before he starts taking wounds. So let's suppose he takes an eight point hit, uh, eight points of damage, he's going to soak five of those, and then he's going to put the other three over in his wounds. So those are the basics of the character sheet. If you've got more questions about the character sheet or how it works, please uh, feel free to leave a message for me in the chat. I would be happy to talk to you about it. Uh, but for now, this